We celebrated Christmas big in my family. When we lived in Nevada, we drove Dad's pickup into the white pine forest and the Sierras, found a suitable tree that reached the ceiling of our house, chopped it down, and hauled it back home. We encircled it with strands and strands of red and green lights. We tossed silver tinsel on the pine needles. On the green limbs, leaking sap, we hung our homemade ornaments I had made in my kindergarten class or that we had collected from the years of art and craft projects and family hand-me-downs. Under the tree would go boxes and bags with toys and gifts for all of us. On Christmas Eve, with the help of my older siblings, I wrote a note and put it on a plate with cookies my sisters and I had baked. Once in bed, I squeezed my eyes tight, trying my darndest to go to sleep. Otherwise, Santa would not arrive. My purple bicycle had shown up from Santa the year I heard his reindeer go cloppity cloppity clop across the rooftop, and I'd run outside in the snow in my bare feet to see the hoof prints. I believed. And every year, Santa showed up, ate the cookies, and left a thank you note in tidy handwriting very similar to my dad's. <laughs> I believed in believing. When I turned seven, my dad, who was the spitting image of John Wayne, got a new job in oil exploration and we moved to Africa. No more tree chopping in the white pine forest. Not even so much as a pine needle existed in the tropics of Nigeria. And in shipping all our belongings halfway around the world, our homemade Christmas decorations were lost. So we bought a tree from another American family who had transferred to Norway, a silver tinsel tree. The only green on that tree was the disco light with three rotating colored bulbs, <laughs> which we placed on the floor behind it. When the light was plugged in, a red, green, and blue disco halo caught the reflection of the foil needles and branches. I secretly loved that tree. <laughs> Everyone else in my family despised it and called it contrived. I think our friends even apologized when they brought the tree over. <laughs> but to me, the way the tree changed from blue to purple to red, then to orange to green to turquoise, that tree was alive. And with each rotation of the lights, it always changed who it was. The geckos that slipped in through the space around the edge of the air conditioner and ran along the walls now slithered between the splash of lights. Anything that sparkled represented joy. My dad joked that Santa might not know we were celebrating Christmas with a tree like our new one. How's he gonna know where we live, Daddy said, while we stuck the tinsel limbs of the tree into the plug holes in the broom handle tree trunk. We don't even have a chimney, he said. At seven, I believed in Santa with a passion. I thought about Daddy's question for a moment. I'd never seen a Christmas special on TV where Santa didn't land on a sloped roof covered in snow. Here in Nigeria, we had flat roofs covered in mold. But I had seen on those same TV shows Santa flying in the sky from the pulled back camera lens as he traversed the entire globe. No, he'll find us, don't you think, I asked. This news was disconcerting. It's a long way from Ely, Nevada, Daddy said. I guess we won't know until Christmas morning. That didn't sit well with me. That wouldn't be right. Everything had to happen on Christmas night or it didn't happen at all. <laughs> this was what I wanted to believe more than anything. There was an order to things. If another power could look out for me, one that I could just believe in, then everything would turn out okay. I just couldn't falter in my belief. If we wavered, Santa might detect that and not show up at our house after all. <laughs> he knows things we don't know, I told my dad. Does he, he asked. We were hanging the blue balls on the tree now. The tree came with only one decoration, blue glass balls. We didn't have any of our own decoration, so that's all we had to put on that tree. Santa would like this tree, I thought, a very organized and tidy tree. How does he get everything done so fast in one night, Daddy asked me. It was just the two of us now. Daddy hung the blue globes at the top of the tree and I skirted around the bottom. 
He just does, I said, getting irritated that Daddy was messing around with the believing part of the deal I had with Santa. And he doesn't get jet lag, he asked. I couldn't worry about such things as that. Santa had it figured out, and we had to just trust he would show up, because he would. I don't know, I said, and then I stopped and looked at Daddy, the hook of the ball, the glass ball in between my fingers, one slip, and the ball would shatter on our marble floor. I knew the fragility. Do you really think he might not come, I asked. Dad laughed. I'd learned later those laughs at the end of a good tease were for his own sake. He'd got me. Are you leaving him cookies, he asked. Yes, I said. Suzanne and I made cookies yesterday. We stood back and admired the tree. Brightly colored lights like precious jewels and alabaster splashed on the wall. Santa might even come to our house first, I thought, just because he'd want to see our special tree up close. But the idea that Santa might not come clenched at my little girl heart. I would think hard about him, and he would hear my thoughts. I fancied Santa was in tune to what each household needed. Moving to Nigeria had changed more than just our Christmas. Instead of pine trees and rose bushes and deer in our yard, we had banana trees, mangoes, and fruit bats. <laughs> my brother and sister, both in high school, had been sent to boarding school in Switzerland, and my mother lay upstairs in bed suffering from malaria. Instead of Mulberry Street School, which I could walk to, I went to the American International School next to the Nigerian Army Barracks on Victoria Island. This is where the public executions were held. Instead of getting out for snow days, my new school was excused for execution days. Our household staff didn't celebrate the Christmas spirit, but instead worried about the Juju, the Yoruba tribe cast on the Hausa tribe. We had no snow, but the red hibiscus flowers grew as big as basketballs. Christmas morning, I woke up as I did every Christmas, electric. I was so excited. I opened my eyes and stared into the darkness of early morning. I heard a gecko skitter across the ceiling over my head. I strained my ears to detect if anyone else knew it was Christmas morning yet. Not even so much as a whine of an insect could be heard. I made it out of my bedroom door to the staircase. At the top of the stairs, I felt for the banister and began to make my way down the steps. I liked to arrive, to arrive at the gift-laden tree first. Halfway down the stairs, sparkles scattered across my toes and across the wall. Something was happening. Maybe Santa was still in the living room. If I caught him, it could ruin everything. So I leaned down to look through the banister to the tree. The spinning lights had been left on. The red, green, and blue dreamy sequence rotated over the sil silver tinsel in the otherwise dark room. The colors splashed on the wall and tiny reflections of white light danced on the ceiling. Rubies, sapphires, and emeralds, and diamonds flickered in the air. I raced to the bottom of the stairs and I twirled around inside the circles. I reached up to grab the bits of light, but they escaped before I could open my hand. But the magic was real. Under the tree, it was always clear which gifts Santa had brought during the night because he never wrapped his. <laughs> First, I spotted a red blow-up Rudolph the reindeer. Then I saw a wooden music box that when I opened it, it paid, played Edelweiss. Then propped up against the other gifts that had sat under the tree for days, I spied the cardboard box with the cellophane window where the Susie st doll stood. The Susie doll that had been on the shelf in the hall closet where birthday gifts for other little girls were kept. <laughs> the Susie doll I had cried over because we almost gave it away to the Italian girl at her birthday party. The Susie doll I had told Dad I coveted. The Susie doll with the tiny comb and flowered hair ribbons. The jewel-toned lights spluttered all around me. I had known beyond a, beyond a doubt that Santa would come. I had only to believe, and he had made it to Nigeria. Amy Wallen.